Hey there, thanks for coming back to Private Pilot Ground School. Before we continue on, I want to make sure that I mention this in case I forgot it in the last video. All the airspace classes are controlled except for Class G airspace. That one is uncontrolled. The difference between the two is that air traffic control can control you and give you instructions and tell you what to do in the controlled airspace. While in Class G airspace, they don't provide any of those services and basically you are on your own. Class E airspace or Class Echo is fairly hard to describe because basically it just fills in all the cracks between all the airspaces. So we'll leave it for now, but as we talk about all the other airspaces, I'll mention where Class E airspace is. You can spot a Delta airspace by the dashed blue line that outlines the airspace. There's also some brackets and a number inside of them that tell you how high the airspace goes in thousands of feet MSL. Class Delta is typically a cylinder shape and it starts at the surface and goes up to 2500 feet AGL, that's above ground level. This airspace in particular goes up to 4000 feet MSL in the example, so if we take that as the top of our airspace and we subtract 2500 feet AGL, we should be left with an elevation of the airport of roughly 1500 feet. And if you look right there, that's pretty much exactly what it is. So once again, Delta airspace goes from the surface up to 2500 feet AGL. The radius of the airspace is 5 nautical miles from the center of the airspace as well. Class Delta airspace is a controlled airspace, and this is probably one of the first airports you will go to that has a control tower on the airport. These are usually smaller regional airports that don't have a lot of traffic. They might have some airline traffic, but for a lot of them, it's mostly general aviation airplanes that fly in and out of there. Inside of that faded, weird-looking magenta line, we have Class Golf airspace going from the surface to 700 feet AGL. Above that, here's a new thing. Class Echo starts at 700 feet AGL and goes up to 18,000 feet MSL. Outside of the magenta faded line, Class G goes from the surface to 1,200 feet AGL. And then Echo fills in the gap starting at 1,200 feet AGL up to 18,000 feet MSL. Where our Class Delta airspace is around the airport, that Delta airspace goes surface to 2,500 feet AGL. And then Echo airspace starts at 2,500 feet AGL and goes up to 18,000 feet MSL. Like I mentioned before, Class Echo airspace is a little bit challenging to define. It does start above all the airspaces that we're talking about. So it starts above the G's and above the Delta airspace and it goes up to 18,000 feet MSL. For our Class Charlie airspace, we'll type in Bravo India Lima and that'll take us to Billings Logan International Airport in Montana. On the chart, Class Charlie airspace looks like two dark magenta circles, one inside the other one. In three dimensions, Class Charlie airspace looks like an upside down wedding cake with a big circle being on top and the smaller one being on the bottom. As far as the dimensions of Class Charlie airspace, the inner circle is 5 nautical miles from the center of the airport and it goes from the surface up to 4000 feet AGL. The outer circle has a 10 nautical mile radius and it starts at 1200 feet AGL going up to 4000 feet AGL. Inside each one of the circles, you'll find the elevation of Class Charlie airspace. Right here it says the bottom is 4,900 feet MSL and the top is 7,700 feet MSL. The inner circle starts at the surface and goes up to 7,700 feet MSL. And that's roughly 4,000 feet AGL in this particular area. Now let's combine what we know so far to figure out what exactly the airspace is in this area. Outside of our faded magenta, we have Class Golf airspace from the surface to 1200 feet AGL. Above that, we have Class Echo airspace. Inside of the faded magenta, Class Golf goes from the surface up to 700 feet AGL. Above that, we have Class Echo, 700 feet AGL, up to 18,000 feet MSL. It does get a little bit interesting once you get inside of Class Charlie airspace and underneath it. In the center, we have Class Charlie airspace going from the surface up to 4,000 feet AGL. The outer circle, we still have Class Golf airspace going from the surface up to 700 feet AGL. Then we have Class Echo airspace now starting at 700 feet AGL and going up to 1,200 feet AGL. And that's where Class Charlie starts, 1,200 feet AGL up to 4,000 feet AGL. Then above 4,000 feet, 
class echo goes up to 18,000 feet MSL. I know this is completely confusing and your brain just probably went, what in the world is going on? So let's look at it in three dimensions and maybe it'll help you out a little bit. So once again out here we have class golf surface to 1200 feet. Inside of the magenta we have golf surface to 700 feet. And then at 700 feet class echo starts, goes up to 1200 feet right up to class charlie airspace. And then class charlie goes 1200 up to 4000 feet AGL. Does that make it any clearer? Class Bravo airspace surrounds the nation's busiest airports. Denver, New York, LA, places like that. This is where it's super congested and where there's a lot of airline traffic and that's where Class Bravo airspace is. There's no better way to start than just by looking at an example. So we'll put in DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas as an example. On Sky Vector you can select a TAC chart. Basically, it's a zoomed-in version of a Class Bravo airspace, so you'll see the details a lot better. The one thing that you'll notice as we look at a couple more examples is that Class Bravo airspace is not standard. In other words, there aren't just two circles or three or four circles. It's kind of tailored to the specific airport and to the uh, arrivals and departures that they have in that airport. Now, in general, Class Bravo airspace goes from the surface up to 10,000 feet. That's not standard, but most of the airspaces go up to 10,000 feet MSL. Class Bravo airspace is centered usually around a navigational aid. In this case, it's the Maverick VOR. All these airspace circles are based on distance from that VOR. And so the first one's 10 miles, and then 13 miles, 20 miles, etc. In each one of these little sectors, Class Bravo airspace has a different floor, or at the bottom of the airspace or where it starts. We'll go ahead and start looking from the west, from the left side, and make our way in towards the center. This little section right here has Class Bravo going from 6,000 up to 11,000. Then the next section from 5,000 to 11,000. Section after that from 4,000 to 11,000. And then 3,000 to 11,000. The next one here is from 2,000 to 11,000. And then right around the airport it goes from the surface to 11,000. And those altitudes are all MSL. As you might have guessed, the goal of Class Bravo and Charlie airspace is is to get airplanes down for landing. And so airline traffic can go down to 6,000, 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, and then come in and land. And it basically keeps all the little guys away from Class Bravo airspace, or below that airspace at least, because there are some requirements you need to meet in order to be cleared into Class Bravo airspace, and we'll talk about those later. One additional thing to point out about every Class Bravo airspace is it has a 30 mile mode C veil. We'll talk about that when we talk about requirements, but that's something to look out for as well when you're trying to figure out airspaces. The FAA also has Class Bravo airspace charts that basically declutter everything and just leave you with the airspace picture so you can get a better look at what it looks like. Let's now go ahead and take a look at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. This is probably one of the most confusing airports in my opinion just because there's so much on the chart, so many colors, so many airspaces. We'll go ahead and look at the Class Bravo chart that the FAA has and if you can get an idea and maybe figure out how the traffic flows in and out of the airport you might get an idea of why Class Bravo is arranged in the way it is. If you look at LA, if you're coming in from the east and you're a big airliner, you'll be allowed to descend to 9,000, then 8,000, then 7,000, then 4,000, 2,500, 2,000 and then all the way down to the surface. Now if you're coming in from the south, it's the same sort of thing, 8,000, 5,000, as you go around and land the opposite way. Basically this is just a giant traffic pattern for airplanes coming in to land at LAX. Because this airspace is so cluttered and all complicated, it gives us a great area to review our airspaces in. So if you look at Long Beach Airport, we can see that it's a dashed blue line which means it's a class delta airspace starting at the surface and going up to 2600 feet MSL, that's in the brackets. And then above that we have class Bravo airspace but that doesn't start until 5000 feet MSL. And so from 2600 feet MSL up to 5000 feet MSL we have class Echo airspace that fills in the gap. Just to the southeast of Long Beach Airport we have the Orange County Airport, that's a class Charlie airspace. You can see that there's a faded magenta just a little bit to the southwest 
That means that where our pin is, class golf starts at the surface and it goes up to 700 feet AGL. And above that we have class Echo airspace that starts at 700 feet AGL and goes right up to class Charlie airspace which starts at 2500 feet MSL and it goes up to 5400 feet MSL. At 5400 feet class Charlie ends and there's a gap before class Bravo begins at 7000 feet MSL. And so we have class Echo again that fills in the gap from 5400 feet MSL up to 7000 feet MSL. And then class Bravo goes from 7,000 up to 10,000 feet MSL. Now if we go up and go to the northeast of LA, you'll find Whiteman Airport. And we'll focus on that little Whiteman Airport just because it looks kind of funky. So at Whiteman Airport, we have class Delta airspace. That's the dash blue line. It's not really circular, but it kind of looks half circle-ish. So class Delta airspace over there goes from the surface up to 3,000 feet MSL. Now if you notice there's a little minus in front of the 3,000. That means it goes up to but not including 3,000 feet MSL. Class Delta airspace goes from the surface up to 2,999 feet. And above that, if you look we have solid magenta lines all over the place. That's class Charlie airspace. So class Charlie airspace starts at 3,000, goes up to 4,800 feet MSL. So what we have here is a class Delta airspace underneath a class Charlie airspace. Let's do one more example. We'll go down to Santa Monica airport. Santa Monica is a class Delta airport. It's kind of hard to see. It goes from the surface up to 2700 feet MSL. Above that we have class Bravo airspace starting at 5000 feet MSL going up to 10,000 feet MSL. But in the middle, between 2,700 feet and 5,000 feet, we have class Echo airspace. Our last airspace is class Alpha airspace. And believe it or not, this is probably one of the easiest ones to remember. Class Alpha airspace goes from 18,000 feet up to 60,000 feet. Now above 18,000 feet, we call altitudes flight levels. So 18,000 is actually flight level 180. So the dimensions are from flight level 180 to flight level 600. You basically drop the last two zeros when you call it a flight level. Class Alpha airspace exists everywhere over the contiguous United States. It's also over Alaska, but there is no class Alpha airspace over Hawaii. Let's do a quick little recap on all these airspaces. Sometimes you have a class Echo airspace that starts at the surface and there is no class G airspace. It looks like this with the dashed magenta line. Class Golf airspace can be surfaced to 1200 feet and it looks just like this with nothing around it. Then we have class Golf airspace that goes from the surface up to 700 feet with a faded magenta line. Sometimes you have class G airspace that goes from the surface up to 14,500 feet MSL if you're in the middle of nowhere and it's on the hard side of the faded blue line. And then you also have a zipper and that's basically a custom airspace. Usually you'll see a feet MSL altitude that tells you how high class golf airspace goes. And then here's a class Delta airspace. Delta goes from the surface up to 2500 feet AGL and it has the top of the altitude in brackets in feet MSL. Class Charlie airspace is two dark magenta circles. The inner one is a 5 mile radius from the surface up to 4000 feet AGL. The outer one is a 10 mile radius from 1200 feet AGL up to 4000 feet AGL. Class Bravo airspace has solid blue lines. Usually it's kind of circular, but not always. It goes from the surface up to 10,000 feet, and it's kind of like an upside down wedding cake as you go further out. There's also a 30 mile ring around it, or a 30 mile mode sea veil. And then Class Alpha airspace goes from 18,000 feet to 60,000 feet, or from flight level 180 to flight level 600. And that's airspace. Make sure you rewatch this video and the previous one just to get a grasp on this airspace stuff. I know it's super confusing. The best thing is practice. Go onto Sky Vector, look at random parts of the country and try to figure out the airspaces from the surface all the way up to class alpha airspace. And until we meet again, have fun, fly safe, and always keep learning. See you in the next one.